Indianapolis 500. Get ready. And there is a 33-year-old engine green. leading the field at 33. Here. And Mako is challenged here. by Dixon Alley. That orange and blue tie right. going around the outside. outside. Dixon falling and gets it. Right. Clear, clear. Bold move from Scott Dixon around the outside. Moves to the inside there. Hinchcliffe all over the back. Looks oh, like you've got yeah, a problem. James Davison. Right James. front. Yeah, he's hit the wall. It looks like the and the brake is on fire. Oh my gosh. The wow, that's the whole apart. wheel oh is God. broken what? apart. So that's I've never seen anything like that the before. Right wheel's gonna come off in a second. Get a low. Get a low. Get, low. Get it off the track. Yep. James Davison in the Dale Coin entry with Rick Ware Racing Bird and Bellotti wow. entry. Wow, that is wild. I've never, ever seen. I don't know why he just doesn't stop. Well, if you can get to pit lane and, and they can figure out how to get that wheel off, Paul, I'm sure. Oh, now wow. the whole car's going to light up. That's a big fire. He needs to get out of that car really quickly right now. This is Australia's James Davison in his sixth Indianapolis 500. And it is over pretty much as quick as it started. What a shame. The 2008 Indy 500 winner leads the field back to green. But let's see what Hunter Ray's got early on here. Marco Andretti is trying to get something on to Kumasato. And James Hinchcliffe in the orange Genesis car is wheel to wheel with Renas VK through one. And Lee up front, don't be surprised if Scott Dixon lets Ryan Hunter Ray go because when you're out front, you use a lot more fuel and a yellow on the track, Lee. For no obvious reason, oh, just here, there's a big obvious a, reason. Marcus Erickson. That's a big crash right there. I believe. Paul Marcus Erickson had been working it's really right, hard to right get around in front of me. Now here. the car lights up, Paul. What do I'm, you see? I'm right on top of it. His car is on fire. But this has got to be a big disappointment. As he, But as he's coming off of turn two here, right in front of me, oh, it gets a little bit oh, loose right there. It just flat pancakes the wall in turn one and then it slid all the way over to where I was and it stopped literally right underneath me. That was a massive hit. Big tank slapper in the dirty air. Erickson had been working hard to try to make some ground on VK. And Paul, that's a great point. Such a tight pit road. Every gonna, everybody going to try and mine their P's and Q's here. Takuma Sato started third. He is in third right now, saying the car has too much understeer. They're going to make a wing adjustment. Meanwhile, Ryan Hunter Ray and Scott Dixon both said they were impressed with the mileage they were able to get. Ryan Hunter Ray said, hey, if we can do that all day long and make the numbers we need to make, I'm very happy. No changes on the wing or air pressure for Ryan Hunter Ray. Same for Scott Dixon, who was very happy with the car and about to give up the lead to Hunter Ray just to make sure they could save wow. a little bit of fuel. Dixon going to use that second pit stall, and he will win the Fire Firestone race off pit road here and a tight race there by a bunch of guys further back. Oh boy, that was close between Ryan Hunter Ray and James Hinchcliffe. I think Hunter Ray had to get on the brakes to avoid his teammate. He is going to lead the defending Indy 500 winner back green. to green. Well, he's not going to lead for long because that was a masterful restart and Pagano is going to be by before they even hit the start finish line. Look at the field behind him, six wide further back. You've got seven Chevrolet cars to lead the restart and then a bunch of angry fast Hondas coming. Look at Dixon getting checked up there. He's trying to get around Ben Hanley in the Dragon Speed entry. Zach Beach is coming up on Takuma Sato. Dixon tucks back in. Beach Rossi. goes around the outside. Three wide coming onto the back straight away in the back. Look at this guys in the back here. It's craziness. Simon Pagina, Will Power, Elio Castroneves, all of these guys hitting right here while everybody else, Scott Dixon, Alexander Rossi, they They've got another 10 laps on the track at least, so we're going to see this all day long, Kevin. So Simon Pagino was planning on going about three laps longer. Oliver Askew was told, come in when the leader comes in. So the top two are in. Front wing adjustment there you see on Menard Chevrolet. And Pagino is out, but Askew beat him with a quicker stop. Tell you what, those McLaren guys are very fast in the pit lane. They just Bravo. beat Team Penske, unbelievable. Will Power just about loses the back end of that Verizon Chevy as he comes to the line. Will Power, they made an adjustment to the wing. His first pit stop on lap eight. Will Power now up in clean air. He had been running third, then pitted from the lead. He said no changes this time around. He had a lot of pit miscues this season, looking for some good clean stops here today. It's a fast stop. Dixon now back to the point, followed by Rossi. In the way it's looking now, this is going to be a dog fight, I think, between Dixon and Rossi all the way, at least for the next 150 miles. And all four pen.
60 cars on a different strategy, albeit three of them by one lap. And then you've got Newgarden on a different one totally. So we'll see how that works because there's Simon Pagano, there's Elio Castro Neves, who was able to uh, not leapfrog Simon Pagano. And here comes the other two guys on that different strategy. Scott Dixon. There's the issue, guys. Scott Dixon is looking just down the road now at lapping Pagano and Power, who just came out of the pits in front of him. So. Well, take a look at this at what just happened to Alexander Rossi as he comes to pit lane. Oh, oh outside the lines. He might oh, get no. Oh, oh, no. He missed the pit entry. Overcooked it out of four. Must have been a late call, perhaps, and that's going to be a huge time loss. That's a. That's got to be several seconds he'll lose oh, to Dixon. Going for the big in lap, Marty. And, and Paul, we're going to see how much that will affect him. You see Scott Dixon on pit road. Right behind him, Remus VK. Trying to pull out of his stall. Oh, right. VK stalls his car. You see Rossi, he leaves pretty close to Dixon. So I'm wondering if it did not hamper him that much. But VK killed the car when he came out of pit road. Just popped the clutch too quick. And it stalled on him. They had to push him back, crank it back up. But Renus VK going to lose a massive amount of time. He came to pit road running third, guys. That's the only blemish that this 19-year-old Dutch driver has had this month here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. He's going to come two, right out. 6.2 second pit stop for Dixon. Flying in the pits, flying on track. The Wicks car coming out, trying to run the car. Third caution of the day flies here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for 26-year-old Canadian and rookie at the 500, Dalton Kellett for AJ Foyt Racing. He's done a nice job this month. You know, people said he was maybe a little over his head for this. And Townsend, he's really been consistent, was at nice pace, qualified well, but here we get a replay. He goes on the inside and just kind of stuffs it in there and then get the, gets the wake wash and runs it up into the gray and, and bangs the wall. So. Had a, had a run going on Ben Hanley, and I think he thought Hanley would give him the corner, and then he washed up into the dirty air. Marty, let's find out what Scott Dixon has, if those guys can be six seconds again. Yeah, some of these uh, guys kind of staying out here, so a little uh, reversal of strategy, but Takuma Sato, kind of a sigh of relief in the 30 camp. He said, undo that last wing change. Did not like that. They're going to change with air pressure. He's dealing with understeer once he hits traffic. Alexander Rossi, you talk about a sigh of relief. The man who missed pit road earlier, he gets to close up that five-second gap. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment. Dixon easily wins the race off pit road, even though there was a long debate about whether or not they wanted to come down pit road. Everybody up front comes down pit road. Trouble for Marco Andretti with the right rear. He loses two spots. Look at Newgarden. T. Penske getting five positions. And we've now got two Chevrolets in the top five. They're trying to take the fight back to the Hondas, but it's Scott Dixon for Chip Ganassi Racing. They'll see the green flag first. Let's go. Takuma Sato is not too far behind, and Alexander Rossi as well. Oh! oh. Look at the look at the spinner. Connor Daly. Like Connor Daly spins. And oh! oh big hard hit, hit for Dixon. Oliver Askew. Oliver Askew oh. lost it in the smoke, and that was a massive hit. That was nasty. So it was panic in the back when Connor Daly lit it up and lost it, and then you can't, I would imagine, Townsend, that the smoke, he probably couldn't see. Well, but he, he was, I mean, he was so fast onto the scene. I, I'm not sure if Connor Daly was hit or what happened as the AMR team quick to tend to ask you get the fire out on the right rear. That was a big hit. Wow, that was a vicious angle, too, that he came darting off of turn four. He dotted across. So here we go. Connor just yeah. loses it on the power. He's down way low. Lots of smoke. He's got the throttle wide open. And in the back here, I don't really know what, I don't know if he got touched, but bang, oh. side slap, pancake the wall. Thank goodness Super for the hard. safer barrier. Thank oh. goodness for the safer barrier. I wonder if I don't Connor know if he got, got his turned. left front onto that apron uh, that caught out Alonzo in practice. A Dixon, Scott Dixon, race leader in that PNC Bank Honda. He has got Takuma Sato all over him. Alexander Great. Rossi, then Pato Award, the 21-year-old rookie. Let's go again. Sato made a good restart there, but I don't think he's close enough to draft up. But now Rossi has the draft, the double draft here. Might have an opportunity to go to the inside, which is his favorite spot. Down to got it done. Alexander Rossi threw on the inside of Sato and sets out after Dixon. <laughs> Santino Ferrucci with a big run goes for the short shoot move on Newgarden. That is bold 
in high risk, but Ferrucci pulls it off in that short shoot. Now Rossi takes the lead. There's the fight that we're going to have. I believe this is going to be the fight for the win I right think, here. I think Scott Dixon might have just given Rossi the lead. Marty, do you think Dixon is trying to save fuel right now? It's exactly right, Townsend. It's the game of who wants to lead right now. They told Alexander Rossi. All of these teams, by the way, are so close on making it on two stops. Alonso doing a great job. You've got to stay in it. Stay focused. Stay hungry. His caution is out. What's it for? Where is it? Oh, there it is. Oh, it's oh, Alex no. Below, the rookie who had had such a glittering time here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. About, Everybody's coming, Marty. How about everybody being the answer, Lee? Yeah, they're all coming down pit road. Takuma Sato saying, I need a half turn of wing out on that run. And interestingly, Scott Dixon on the bottom of your screen said it was almost hard to tell what the car was doing because we weren't really running at the pace that I would have liked. But everybody asking for tear offs here. And again, this will not get them in the window to make it on one more stop with 76 laps to go. We're going to see who wins the race off oh, of pit oh, road oh. here. Tight for Dixon to get around Marco Andretti. But Pato Award picks up a spot here. A couple spots on the pit road. Dixon holds the lead. There was contact between Alexander Rossi and Takuma Sato as well. That Firestone race off pit road. By the way, just updating you that there were some late stoppers there. Elio Castro Neves, Spencer Piggott, they decided to top off. Let's go racing again as Felix Rosenquist at the front. Renas BK and then... The 24 of Sage Karen, but then you pick up Scott Dixon, and Dixon is being hassled by a rookie in Pato Award. Meanwhile, bottom of your screen, Focus it's forward. Alexander Rossi on the go. And Karen and VK had a touch up there going into turn one as Ferrucci goes high once again. Too much, this is way too much fun. Rossi angry fast, Dixon trying to protect his car and get to the lead. Rossi trying to get by Castro Neves right here. He gets a run off the corner. Oh, it slides up the inside, up. but it's all jammed oh, up. Look no. at these guys just trying to get out of the way here. What's going on? Oh, my gosh. What's Alexander Rossi, what a move. Clear. Great job, great job. That's at over 200 miles an hour, folks. Incredible. Although one of the three cars crashed out at the hands of Marcus Ericsson, Scott Dixon leads and has led the most laps, almost 100, in fact, and he's upped his pace considerably. His teammate, we saw, dive for yep. pit lane. Yep. There's another caution. Oh. It's uh, Alexander Rossi. Rossi is out of this 500. Well, this changes everything because Rossi has now crashed. We've got another yellow in the split strategy, Townsend. We were talking about it during commercial. You okay, Alex? Ganassi's got this thing, like, totally timed right with both cars. This fifth Indy 500. It's up high. Oh, got loose on him. Wow. wow. So it's just same thing as, uh, exact same thing as, as what happened to Erickson. We got the Iceman and the Wild Thing, Townsend, and the Wild Thing's actually been pretty cool today. He's been riding and, and staying safe, so he's waiting for the end. Well, Graham Rahal, his teammate, is not waiting for Sato. They go oh, side by side and one. For they Richie. almost touched. Look at Newgard. Newgard to the outside. He's making his move right now on Graham Rahal. Newgard in the two-time series champ right around the outside in turn two. Newgard. Great move, Joseph Newgard. Together here, making the fuel mileage. Hopefully they can break away. Pass for the lead there as Sato goes to the front. Dixon's lap, lap, last lap of 217. So I think Dixon happy once again to ride in second. Scott Dixon to pit lane, the most important stop of the season for the nine team right here. And they 30. have been phenomenal, Marty, all day. That's the point I was going to make, Lee. 31 to go. They've been outstanding all day long. Let's see if Scott Dixon's team can deliver on the most pressure-packed stop of the entire year. The car has been flawless. They've asked Scott several times today, do you want any changes? Every time he has said no. Meanwhile, Joseph Newgarden on the track oh, around to come out a little bit longer on that stop for Dixon and his team. We'll see how that affects the track position and where he cycles out. There was an issue, issue on the back inside corner on Dixon's car. He was a little slow on that one. So Watch we'll this. see where they're going to cycle here. Watch the, the blend. Here There's Sato. There's Newgarden coming through turn two. Scott Dixon trying to get up to speed. Look at this. There, there they are. I think Sato he's got Newgarden. enough. Go and Ray Hall. Ray Hall in the mix right there. Whoa. Trying to block Newgarden. 
does this lap here as he steps on the gas and finds another gear. Sato, Sato squeezes him to the outside. That lap, Sato's 19.5. Sato's got to be careful. That was definitely in reaction to Dixon's move. Think about how there's been a lot of talk about what they call blocking today. Several people have filed a complaint with the stewards to say, hey, Takuma Sato has been blocking on restarts and during runs. you got to wonder if they do that again. If Sato does that again, would the stewards call it? Right? Laps are not quick. 2.10 on that last lap for Dixon, 2.13 for Sato, and it's he's built a big gap. But Charlie Kimball is still in front of Sato, circulating oh. much slower. Oh, oh big oh, crash. Boy. Into the oh, attenuator. No. That's right, yes. Pitty, and that's Spencer Piggott. This is going to cause a red flag for sure because they're going to want to finish this under green. Right at the pit attenuator, right on the oh, very that's a end. big crash. Oh, boy. Plays Plays not already, already way loose, loses it, brushes the wall, not super hard, and then it just hooks itself, and that's the worst-case scenario oh. right there. He's going over 100 miles an hour and comes to effectively a, a, a full stop. Listen here. Oh. And that is why we have this new safer screen because I really believe, Townsend, that that just saved his life. Those tires, up, if, up, 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 up the if those You're tires tired. would have You're come tired. over the top of the car and hit him in the head, yeah. who knows what would have happened. So he gets to see the target and then he knows that he's in for a wallop of a hit. As you rejoin us, I can tell you that this race will not be red flagged and it will finish under yellow with Takuma Sato winning his second Indianapolis 500 for Rahal Letterman Lanigan Racing. His other win was for Michael Andretti. This one for Bobby Rahal, Mike Lanigan and David Letterman. And there is the 1986 winner, Bobby Rahal on the right. Really special moment and the way that he had to go. Yeah, let's bring this thing home, man. Let's bring it home, and he is. Thanks, guys, baby. We want it. Takuma Sato is a two time winner of the Indianapolis 500 for Rahal Letterman Lanigan Racing. Sato, Dixon, and Rahal. Takuma, you are the man. You drove the wheels off that thing today. Hey Motorsports fans, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe before you go for all the latest news and highlights across motorsports.